Well, that was Stephen Powers. We can talk to Duncan Robertson, Dr. Duncan Robertson, an academic at Loughborough University. Welcome to Politics Live. Um, the link is weakened then between the number of cases and hospitalizations, but how much weaker is it? Well, of course, hospitalizations are always going to follow cases, and we've seen cases go up around 70% this week. We've seen hospitalizations go up around 25%. But I think the really concerning thing is that the rate of hospitalizations is increasing. So it's almost as though you're going along with hospitalizations or putting your foot on the accelerator, and you're starting to put more pressure on that accelerator. And of course, the risk is, as we uh, release restrictions, that that sort of turbocharges that as well. So what we really need to look at is the rate of hospitalizations, uh, at the increase of those at the end of this week. So that's the figure that we really need to look at. Right. But in terms of the age profile of people who are being admitted to hospital, has that changed? Well, yes, absolutely. So we are getting younger people. Uh, we're getting more ethnic minorities. We're getting more deprived people. We're getting more uh, inner city people. And of course, uh, one of the reasons for that is the uh, success of the vaccination programme has been uh, tremendous, but it hasn't been equal. So if you look at the number of black people who've been vaccinated in the over 50s, it's about six in 10, as opposed to nine in 10 in white communities. So that's a huge disparity. Mm. Uh, and also you see it in levels of deprivation. You see about the, the latest figures we have are about 72% in the most deprived, there's 84% in the least deprived and of course that's that's increasing all the time so they're slightly out of date but of course delta is going to essentially find the vulnerable right i mean how long um i know broadly speaking are people then staying in hospital well um they're staying generally in less less time but of course that doesn't mean that everyone stays uh in in hospital for less time and we can see that by uh, the number of people in intensive care they're the sort of long stayers um which is increasing as well so we're starting, of course, we've seen cases, then it goes to hospitalizations mm. and intensive care. So we're starting to see these things. And that's why it's very important to look at this growth rate of hospitalizations. Because, of course, these these uh, release of lockdown four hasn't actually been confirmed. Of course, it's going to be confirmed <laughs> next week. And there's a lot of time for more data to come in. Right. So do you think it is too early to say right now that we can get rid of the vast majority of res restrictions? Well, um, it's obviously a political decision and uh, the roadmap's always been a political document there are no numbers in there to say you know what's an acceptable rate of cases yeah. or hospitalizations um but i think the important thing is whatever happens that the government has a plan in case things don't go as well as they might hope right but and then in general terms we heard from stephen powers at the beginning do you think and do you agree with him that the nhs will manage it always does well, uh, it depends what you mean by manage, of course, and I think this is always a definitional thing because the NHS has managed uh, over January. But of course, that does mean that people in the queue for elective surgery haven't perhaps had the care that they uh, were entitled to. So the NHS will always manage, but will, will it manage uh, as well as it could? And, and that's essentially the, the thing. The NHS will never break, but the pressure on the system will just get larger and larger. And of course, that leads to deaths um, potentially in its own way. All right, Dr. Duncan Robertson, thank you very much for joining us.